Hi everyone, it's Diana. And I'm Nick. And it's Wednesday. Wednesday with Team RCIA. Goodness, everything is weird this week, huh? <laughs> so uh, a couple days ago, we talked about our uh, that we're developing this this training path for catechumenate ministers. It's it's basically the the path that Diana and I wish that we would have had laid out for us when we started this ministry to help us become better at, at doing uh, what it takes to do the, the evangelization and initiation ministry of the catechumenate. And sure enough, every, uh, like at least once a month, maybe probably more than that, uh, we get a, an email or a phone call from someone who says, help, I, I just got put in charge of RCIA. I, I've been part of the team for a long time but now this year I'm in charge and I have no idea what I'm doing and this is kind of sort of the same sort of situation that we got put into when we first started and it was hard to sort of figure out all of the bits and pieces of RCI ministry and to get it in a systematic way in our heads that made sense so that we could train our own team members about the RCIA. So what we talked about previously was that, that there were three big goals that uh, we have, um, which we think are kind of universal. The first is to, to have a sense of confidence that we know what we're doing in this ministry. The second is uh, once we have that sense of confidence, it frees us up a little bit to have more engaging interactions led by the Holy Spirit with our seekers mm -hmm. and then uh, and because of that there's just the the stress just kind of melts away once we've got those two things in place we just are open to and able to experience the joy of this ministry much much more deeply so confidence more engaging uh, interactions with our seekers and a, a less stress and a better sense of joy. Those we think are the three big goals that most of us have in this ministry. So to achieve those three goals, we sort of discerned that there were four main areas of formation and we're calling them cornerstones. Four cornerstones that every RCIA uh, minister really needs to get into their bones and understand and deepen constantly, even if you've been doing this forever, to constantly deepen your understanding of these four major cornerstones. And I'll show you, we'll show you, because uh, we got our, our website up and running. <laughs> Oh my God, what what an ordeal. Look at it, it's so pretty. This is a great picture. Um, fa fa we should say, if, if folks don't know, Facebook won't let us share a screen like you can do on Zoom and, and GoToWebinar. <laughs> those, those video services will let you share your computer screen and so you don't have to do this sort of combination low tech thing. Well, we're still old school. Yeah. We yeah. never got trained in tech. Well, so Facebook <laughs> Facebook Live doesn't have that capability. So So yeah. here here's one of our landing pages that talk about the four cornerstones. And so the the four cornerstones that we kind of discerned about RCI ministry. The first one we talked about in a previous uh, Facebook Live last week, the foundations. What are the, the main foundational principles and um, uh, uh, kind of the historical background of why we do RCI and what that whole thing well, is and, about. And the system, the steps yes. and stages of the catechumenate process. Then the second cornerstone is about evangelization. We're going to talk about that today. The third and fourth ones are catechesis and liturgy. And so all of these four cornerstones work together to give an RCIA minister and the team a holistic, systematic, comprehensive understanding of this ministry, which is unique and yet the heart of what we are about as parish. And so uh, I think we'll talk about the, the second question. Yeah, so we, as Diana said, we talked about the foundation in an earlier Facebook Live. So you can go backwards on our Facebook page or our YouTube page and look at that if you want. Uh, today we thought we'd talk about the second cornerstone, which is to become master evangelists. Mm -hmm. um, you want to you show that first? Yeah, you I'll, show, I'll first? show you first. 
So we came up we came up with a, a little pathway. Can you see that, Nick, and, and yeah, sort of so, talk through some of so it? So there are, there are six pieces to becoming a master evangelist. First of all, we have to heal the wounds, as Pope Francis says. We have to go out and find those who most need to hear the good news and then and then help them start to heal. And, and that requires the second step, us knowing what the good news is, knowing what the kerygma is, and being able to say that, being able to proclaim that or live that in a way that it attracts people. The third part, as, as catechumenate ministers, our job is to train the whole parish to understand that that's their job. It's not primarily our job. We have to be masters at it as, as catechumenate ministers, but all baptized people are called to evangelize, and we can't really do the catechumenate if our parish is not evangelizing. Uh, and fourth, that, this, uh, that we use adult learning principles in doing this work of evangelization. We're, treating, we're encountering others and treating them as, as though they have gifts to bring to the conversation. They're not, they're not blank slates that we're going to you know, write the doctrines onto, but rather we're going to encounter them and engage them, and, and together we're going to walk on the journey of faith. And then fifth, uh, to, in order to do that, in order to have that encounter, we've developed five particular kinds of inquiry questions, a five-part pa uh, path, a five-part uh, system for actually having those adult-level dialogues, and through, then six, through those adult-level le dialogues that will help us discern where the Holy Spirit has been in this person's life already and where the Holy Spirit is leading that person. Yeah, my sorry. arm was dying. Sorry. sorry, I should talk faster. Should talk faster. So those are those are six steps in this cornerstone. We well, we should we should be consistent with our imagery. Six blocks, six building blocks, six pebbles in six the cornerstone. Pebbles. I don't know, but the <laughs> point is the point is that if we can do these six things, that will help us as catechumenate ministers to really master the evangelization process. As it relates to uh, as it relates to the initiation formation, and, and why evangelization? We often forget that the first stage of the RCIA, the first period, is not an inquiry period. It's not specifically pre-catechumenate period. It's the period of evangelization and pre-catechumenate. And so when does the period of evangelization begin? You can ask your parish, when do we when is when is the first day of our evangelization year? And that asking that question makes no sense because every day is the day for evangelization. Yeah, and so it, to me it helps if we for Catholics, you know, I grew up in um, in Missouri, and, and I grew up in St. Louis, which is a very Catholic town, but I went to college in southern Missouri, which is all Baptist. And and when I was there, I, I sort of got afraid of the word evangelization because the way, you know, like biblical fundamentalists understand the word evangelization, it's more about a little bit like yelling at you, you know, like, like really talking a lot of scripture verses really fast as though that's you know proof you're going to hell if you don't believe these eight propositions that sort of thing and uh, now that's not all baptists everywhere but you can get that impression sometimes and i certainly got it being in that non-catholic atmosphere when i was in college and, and it and, and catholics as a whole weren't talking about evangelization as the first thing we said about being catholic that came a little bit later it came more strong it started with pope paul the sixth but Pope John Paul II really emphasized that we are supposed to be evangelists as Catholics, and and Pope Francis has been reiterating that in in broader, more important way, uh, broader not more important but for me, broader and clearer ways. And so the clarity that I get from listening to Pope Francis talk about evangelization is we're supposed to go out and first of all listen. He says that over and over and over again. The first thing we do is listen. And we listen to the wounds. We listen to the pain that people have. And, and once we have a little bit of a trust relationship and we've heard what their needs are, then we can respond with that first proclamation that Jesus Christ loves you and he's come to save you and he's standing by your side every day. And we, and we translate that into a, a, a healing message for whatever need we've 
heard, what we've listened to from the person we've encountered. When I got that about, you know, that's what it means to be a Catholic evangelist, that just, that just opened up all kinds of insights and light bulbs and things for me. And because, because sometimes we are not as confident as we can be about the RCIA process, or we're worried about getting the process right and getting through the schedule and the calendar year and goodness this person is coming in late or because we're just overly stressed we're not we're not focusing on the person in front of us we tend to not listen and we tend to just get going with the process and yep. we get them registered we give them we give them a book a, a we tell them watch a video we we have them fill out a registration form and we tell them the calendar schedule for what we want them to do in this uh, journey and we forget that it's the holy spirit that guides this entire journey be, through this particular person and there is no textbook that will tell you beforehand how to help this person encounter christ so we have to really play it by ear every time a seeker comes to us and be flexible and confident in the process so that we can be flexible in that process. So it, it really is a, um, the second cornerstone is so crucial because if we don't get this part right, then we've begun the process sort of off in the wrong direction. Yeah, we can't. The, the next cornerstone is catechesis, and we really can't move to catechesis until we have heard the needs, uh, deeply listened to the needs of the person in front of us so that we know what, not that what we're going to teach them, but what how we can help them open themselves to the teaching of the Holy Spirit. It's Jesus who's the catechist, right? And so what we're primarily doing in the stage of evangelization is helping the, the seeker develop a, a bit of a vocabulary, a bit of an open heart, a bit of a, a, a eye, the kind of eyes they need to see the work of the Holy Spirit in their lives. So uh, all of the resources that we put together at TMRCIA.com is meant to help with each of these building blocks uh, in these four cornerstones. And so it's not just ideal sort of theoretical stuff. What we try to do is give the most practical um, methods and, and ideas for putting into place all of these principles, these, these real big high ideals, because they're important, because they, they matter and they make a difference in a seeker's life and in the life of the entire community. So what we're asking you to do is to go check out TeamRCIA.com, first off, because it looks cool. <laughs> And the whole design is just geared toward uh, helping us go deeper into these four cornerstones. But second, so that you can experience yourself what, what you might need in your own formation and discern where are your strengths and where are the places that you can strengthen even further. And then discern with us how we can help you in that formation. And, and we're also asking you, if you can, if you're able, to support us financially. We, we're in the middle of a six-month or six-month, six-week, oh, no, uh, six-week <laughs> uh, kind of membership drive to get to get folks to uh, consider becoming a Team RCI member. And and uh, the, the there are two big reasons to do that. One is because it's really going to help you. It's going to it's going to give you all kinds of resources and support to help you uh, build upon these four cornerstones that we're talking about. And the second is so that we can continue to do this ministry. We can continue to support you and bring you these resources and, and help you uh, become the minister that God intends you to be. And we, we would love it if we were independently wealthy and someone would give us a big grant and we could just do all this for free and, you know, that just hasn't happened. Uh, so, so what we're asking is that the folks who do find this ministry valuable, that you help keep it going by contributing a little bit to, uh, to sustain the ministry. And we also realize that because of COVID, because of, because of uh, people losing their jobs or being downgraded, not all of us, not all folks that we're asking to help are able to help financially. And so if you can't help out financially, we'd ask that you at least help with your prayers 
and uh, pray for us and pray for all of the seekers that everybody this ministry mm -hmm. touches, uh, that, that they really do get it about, about Jesus loving them and standing with them and being at their side every day. So we, we always try to bring a gift for you. And so in the comments section here, uh, there are two links. First, the link to teamrsai.com. Check out the new website. And second, uh, a free, what is it, a free guide? Six amazing things every seeker must learn about Jesus. And so six basic things that can help you uh, start evangelizing even more clearly right now. So go ahead and uh, click on that and download that uh, gift for you and share it with your RCIA team members. Yeah. So I think that's the message we came to say in a future uh, a future Facebook Live, we'll talk more about the third cornerstone, uh, which is catechesis. Mm -hmm. But goodness, we are halfway through Easter, and uh, thank God, it's uh, Easter is a great time. I saw a meme this morning that had uh, a cartoon image of a bunny and a cartoon image of Jesus, and it said the the Easter Dream Team, and the bunny was saying, "I bring chocolate." And Jesus was saying, I, I turn water into wine. So, the wonderful gifts of Easter, chocolate and wine. Mm. <laughs> all right, everyone. Well, thanks for sticking with us for these few minutes. And uh, thanks for all the work you do in this ministry. It's a great honor to be working with you and, and helping. Mm -hmm. Blessed Easter to you. Take care. Bye-bye.